Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to this week's presentation talk. It's my pleasure to introduce Yu Chen Ro from Western University, who is going to be talking to us about three pillars of black hole technology. Uh, can everybody be online here, Yu Chen? Okay. I think it's going to work. Yeah. Thanks a lot. It's my uh, great honor and pleasure to be here to present work and discuss with uh, you. So the talk is um, three pillars of black hole reality. It's uh, based on the ongoing work with the collaboration with Niels Lindemann uh, from Geneva and also Chris Nick from Western. So let me set up uh, at the beginning to set up questions to connect the different parts of the talk. So first is a code transphrase, a paraphrase from Bob Dylan, how many roads must the humans walk down before they got current understanding of black hole. And second, granting the, that black hole exists um, due to the wonderful empirical facts and observation evidence we have about the quasars and the uh, signals X1, and also the image of uh, black hole from event horizon telescope and the gravitational wave detection. So granting all this uh, evidence and the existence of black hole, what else do we need? Um, from the on the theoretical side about um, the properties. And third, um, how to discern the physical properties of black hole from the modern identities? And those will be the leading questions. Well, um, that's, that, that's put the main states on the table first. Um, in this work, we want to argue that um, there have been three pillars of uh, um, that clarify the properties of classical black holes. And those pillars have different techniques of studying general relativity. So there, there are the effect solution approach and the causal topological analysis and the initial value formulation. Um, although we see the numerical relativity has some um, roots in the early development, similar to the initial value formulation, but given the success and the, the, the power of the numerical studies, we think um, definitely Numerical study can be the first pillar, but due to our lack of uh, expertise, so we can include them here. And um, each pillar, um, however, employs different uh, and distinctive math math mathematical um, tools and methodologies. And each poses research questions that cannot be answered from within each, uh, each um, pillar. Um, but we want to argue that those pillars are interrelated um, and they should be integrated. Well, if there is a sense in which it, they can be definitely integrated because there are all different techniques of studying the same underlying theory which you are. But um, we want to say that well, they, are, they should be integrated um, in a sense, in the following sense. So first, there is a conceptual continuity that relates each one in a systematic way. And second, um, when we say integration, we mean that the fuller and the, uh, the better building of black holes uh, image of the reality needs different contents and contributions from the studies uh, uh, under each pillar. Yeah, and here's the structure of the talk. I will um, and then go to some uh, philosophical preamble to talk about the questions and the concerns we have about the uh, black holes reality, and then we'll go to go into each pillar and discuss the um, results and the insights we got from each of them and then also the limits and the, the um, questions that remain by uh, uh, remain to the other pillars and motivate the, uh, the development of the other pillars. And then we will go to talk about different uh, two senses of integration and how can we get a better uh, image of the reality of black hole from the theoretical side. But before we start, um, uh, I want to emphasize that the talk does not first present a detailed history of black hole research, rather gives and focuses on the key conceptual developments. Um, and second, this talk does not include the quantum black holes, but we anticipate a similar analysis um, will apply. And third, um, of course, we don't argue that this is the only way to construct black holes reality because, as uh, mentioned before, there could be uh, numerical relativity to be the first pillar. So there could definitely be uh, additional pillars. So philosophical pre uh, preamble. Um, um, so 
I think it's uncontroversial that in um, uh, the practical employment of the theory for the purpose of prediction or explanation, you already uh, requires the choice of uh, specific mathematical tools. But um, first, um, those choice poses questions regarding the limitations uh, of these techniques and whether they are suitable of answering the relevant physical questions. And second, the techniques themselves may not be able to assess the impact of idealizations and uh, abstractions. And the general question we want to ask is, um, do the mathematical structure introduced by specific techniques represent the genuine physically, uh, physical possibilities? And in the context of a black hole, um, we have the shift of uh, image, uh, viewing black holes. Uh, in the early days of uh, studying GR, people physicists discovered the bizarre exact solutions and their response, uh, initial responses were to reject those um, exact solutions as um, physically impossible. And the question at the time was how to physically interpret their features, those uh, exact solutions features, and uh, are they really candidates for uh, physical assistance? But now the current view um, due to various contributions from observational evidence and empirical studies um, of black hole in a wide range of uh, um, astrophysical um, scenarios and at various mass scales. Now the picture we had is approximately that we treat those simple, um, simple, simplistic exact solutions as final stage or the equivalent states of gravitational collapse in late times. So what questions that have driven this transition um, on the theoretical side? Um, first, um, like in the development of uh, black hole studies, we can see there are a lot of definitions of black holes. If we want to really pursue a very good picture of uh, black holes, the question, natural question is, should we um, require a single and unique definition of uh, black hole? And there is a beautiful survey by Eric Hurrell, um of uh, how many definitions of black holes are there. And the second question is, is the existence of black holes robust to changes, such as removing exactly or removing or the weakening the symmetries and various idealizations in it. And the third question concerning the reality is that um, what local physical conditions rather than the global features from the um, um, solutions lead to the formation of black holes in more dynamical details. So now that's jumping the um, first uh, pillar, namely exact solution. In general, exact solutions uh, refer to the set of uh, solution, uh, analytic and explicit solutions of uh, Einstein field equations, we already under simplifying assumptions. And in this approach, just there are like different, many different kinds of uh, solutions um, now we have in hand. Some, but some describe the late time states of black holes, some describe a, a collapsing space time. Um, here we want to mention two representatives of those different solutions. One is the Kale Newman family of uh, solutions. They describe the symptotic curly flat, stationary, and the symmetric solutions for unexpected equations. And the second set of equations um, um, try to represent the collapsing space time so that you can uh, have some uh, model, some collapsing idealized matter that further form black holes. So you might know very well of this uh, 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 very simple uh, templates, but the, as we know, the structure, structure solution probably the uh, is the first solution to Einstein field equations, and it was uh, developed in um, 1916. And it is actually the simplest uh, uh, member of the Kelman family. And there are various, uh, there are basically three kinds of idealizations that were built. Um, in from the scratch of this um, um, solving. First, it's the solution is the ferricory symmetric and in, it assumes the, the vacuum outside the back holes and the solution itself is static. But very quick a conceptual glance of it is that from this um, um, 
is that metric, we got two properties of the solutions. The first is that we know there is an, a boundary of no return, namely the event horizon locating at uh, R equals 2M. And it was after various efforts by Finkhaus, Pan, Cusco, and Eddington, et cetera, to realize um, it is not some physically ill behavior uh, region. But um, also, there is a singularity um, of this solution um, at the R equals zero marks the growth up of, uh, of curvature. Um, that's the infinity in the um, solution. And um, a very hand wavy um, way of saying the third point is that the bar features singularity and event horizons remain similarly uh, in the other solutions in the k family with different attempts to weaken the symmetries or the matter distribution. Um, that's what we get from the type one solution and the type two solution. Although we, uh, I mean, we really want to appreciate the early works on the stars by Chandrasekhar and um, Landau is actually, but we choose the Oppenheimer's planet model as the representative. So it describes a spherical, uh, spherical labs with uh, the dust of homogeneous density and zero pressure, and it requires the, to construct such model. It requires two parts. The first part is the interior matrix, which uh, simulates the collapse uh, matter. It has the scale factor A uh, changing with the proper time in it. And it also poses the junction condition that requires the match between the interior metric and the, the outside fragile metric um, on the boundary. Um, but what we get um, from the, the model is that it gives us a more dynamical evolution of different um, those properties of the solutions. For example, we know the even horizon um, can form and evolve in what way and the higher horizons. Yeah. Um, although we have got a lot of uh, interesting insights from the um, very quick survey of the exact solutions, but there are some limits that we want to emphasize uh, of this first paper. First, the approach fails to give effective descriptions near the singularity. And as we discussed, there were various idealizations that were imposed in the modeling um, process. And third, insofar as we uh, neglect various aspects of the uh, dynamics, similar to the NCQ equation, we see that the space time structure would be exact. But can we really neglect those? Um, um, can we neglect the uh, them? And will this kind of neglect lead to some um, unreasonable infinity? Are you, do you mean departures near the singularity or outside the horizon? No, no, just near, near the singularity. So the question remains um, like cannot be addressed and has remained um, from the first approach is that could those various simpli the simplifying assumptions especially the symmetries, um, be the source of singularity. And this question then motivates the second pillar we, well, we, we, we say the causal topological approach. Um, so, um, so the causal topological approach was invented to study the global structure of space-time. And, and this global structure of space, uh, relativity space-time developed especially in the 60s um, supports very different approaches in a sense. First, it gives precise um, characterizations of uh, the structure, uh, causal structures shared by different classes of solutions. And um, this approach is sufficiently rich to prove results such as the existence of similarities that were taught shortly. Um, so this approach, this second pillar introduces not only the hi hierarchy of the causal structures uh, from the chronological structure to global hyperbolic structures, but also it gives some, uh, it shifts us focuses on the specific novel concept. For example, the definition of uh, um, a geodesic incompleteness. Um, it, it says that, well, if we want to say a geodesic is incomplete, it means um, they cannot be extended indefinitely to arbitrary larger fine uh, parameter number uh, values. And also it gives the definition of um, closed trap surfaces. And a closed trap surfaces uh, surface is defined as a closed 
space like a two surface with um, the property that if two systems of no geodesics um, meet at the surface and orthogonally converge locally in the uh, future direction of the surface. And the reason we introduce those two specific definitions we'll see later because they are, um, are used in the singularity uh, theories that were uh, motivated by this approach. So um, equipped with the deeper understanding of the uh, causal structure of space-time, together with the, those uh, new concepts, um, the singularity comes on the, uh, to the foreground. And with this, under this second pillar, um, we have singularity theorems that are developed, and then those theorems apply to different classes of solutions. So it's the, like the matter level analysis of different solutions. And then second, um, the singularity theorems are rely on very generic assumptions, such as the energy condition, causality condition, rather than specific matter distribution or the symmetries that were imposed in the first pillar. And the third, um, specifically those theorems use the, um, the geodesic incompleteness as the definition or the marker of a singularity rather than the um, curvature blow up. And um, the very typical uh, theorem, singularity theorem was uh, proved, uh, proven by Penrose in the 1960s. And it says, well, it, it is, the proof is actually by the form of a uh, reduction as a certain, but it says that, well, if three conditions, if space time has three conditions uh, as defined following, it cannot be no geodesic complete. So it, it contains a singularity. So the first condition I want to um, uh, mention is um, the, ge the geometrical energy condition. It's actually the implication from GR if you require that um, the reasonable physical and classical matter has um, uh, uh, a matter density has uh, the non-negative definite um, energy density. So that's what the geometric energy condition tells us about. Um, and the second condition is about the, the causality condition. It requires there to be a non-compact Cauchy surface in the manifold. And that implies the um, a uh, hyperbolic, uh, hyperbolic structure of the space time and therefore non-existence of the closed time curves. And then the third condition is that, well, um, in the manifold, there is a trap surfaces that could be um, represented by the expansion of the neural, geo neural congruences on the, trap uh, on the surface. And if the expansion is negative, it means they, those neural congruences are converging. And it can also be treated as the initial condition of the rising Dory equation, so that if you have the at the initial moment those neural uh, congruences are converging, then you would inevitably meet the conjugate point. Um, but we want to also talk about the scope and the limits of the second pillar and uh, end of the singularity series. First, concerning the strands. At least the uh, Penrose himself, uh, Penrose um, singularity theorem seems in, in, uh, cannot be applied to the chaos solutions. Well, our most kind of um, somehow more re re realistic solution. Since um, in the mass maximum extension of the chaos solution, the inside, inside horizon, they will be, uh, have um, closed time like curves. Um, but I think it's it's worth mentioning that the recent work done by Lesur and the Minguzi, they provide versions of a singularity theorem that can be applied to um, KO uh, solution. But nonetheless, um, those different versions still include the various assumptions about the existence of trap services. So that this fact leads to the second um, point we want to talk about. Concerning the key assumption, the focusing assumption, uh, condition, because the, the existence trap surface is, our, uh, is already presumed in the assumption so that um, you need this existence of trap surface to prove the similarity in, in, the, in, the, in the space time. And at this point is well uh, uh, recognized by Penrose himself in, the paper, in his paper in 1969, right? Uh, four years after the uh, similarity theorem paper. He says that we must now ask the question whether theorems um, are actually likely to be relevant in the case of a collapsing star or super star. 
do we in fact have any reason to believe that the trap services can ever arise in gravitational collapse? Um, it's a very deep insight. And then he continued to say, well, in a situation where we have no trap services and no known uh, theorem guaranteeing singularity, and therefore no uh, analog of a generalized Israel conjecture. So it is really an open question whether such a situation is ever likely to arise. And we are thus presented with what is perhaps the most fundamental unanswered question um, of a general, general relativistic collapse theory. Namely, does there exist a cosmic sensor which uh, who forbids the appearance of naked And all these codes um, emphasize, I think, one point, that's the importance of trap services in the um, um, an internal study of uh, singularity and black holes. So the question really uh, uh, remains from this pillar and we will see motivates the next uh, uh, approach is that where do trap services come from and how do closed trap services arise in space time and by what mechanism? Um, so we go to the third pillar. So following the lines of source and the doubts and concerns of uh, Penrose, I think it's a good starting point to mention um, strong support conjecture in the beginning of the third pillar development. So in, in, in 1972, when Strong tried to generalize the sufficient and necessary conditions for the formation of uh, black holes uh, in the gravitational collapse scenarios, uh, by absorbing the results we have from the exact solutions and the, the, the insights from the topological analysis. Um, the conjecture says, conjecture says that the black holes with horizons form when and only when the mass get compacted into a region whose uh, circumference in every direction has uh, satisfies this uh, requirement. Although it's in vague, somehow vague language, but um, we soon have the um, very um, groundbreaking theorem by Yao and Skogen. So um, basically, they put they, they trans uh, translate the Cook conjecture into some um, um, strict form in the by the uh, by appealing to the initial value formulation, and they prove the theorem that um, if you have any space-like hypersurface um, and there is a bounded region in it, if you um, and on, on that on that surface, you have some requirements uh, concerning the energy density and energy flux, and you have some very suitable measure of the bounded region, um, satisfy the requirement, and then you will see the theorem tells you the the the, the hypersurface already contains attract surfaces. Um, um, so the Yao theorems actually apply the same set the initial value formulation and um. um um, it, it studies the, the it gives the derivation of the existence of trap surfaces due to the physical principle. Namely, the interpretation is that well, if you have enough condensation of matter, then the space uh, have surface will contain some trap surface. And as uh, Fernando suggests, um, the hook conjecture um, actually can be interpreted as a quasi-local state in the spirit of Yao Chong theory. Okay, um, so two points I think we should take away is that first, this Yao Shoran theorem reveals still the existence of closed trap surfaces due to the initial config the configuration of the local matter and hence the already formed black hole thereafter. But what the theorem does not tell us and thus really leaves an open question is that when and by what process and from what initial data uh, in which no such surfaces are present. Um, do trap services form any wall? I have a question. Yeah. On the, like this, this point. So if you go back to the previous slide, yeah. uh, so this condition R omega, uh, that is required to then say that a trap surface exists already. Right? Sorry? So the, this condition R omega on yeah. R omega, is it that's necessary to argue that there's a trap surface? Well, yeah, you need you need to figure out some way to measure the bounds of the region and they have some connections to extremely curvature. Right. So, but does it say that in this condition? Oh, no, no, it's not required. It's, yeah. Oh. What? Well, it measures the bounded region, uh, as far as I understand. And then if you have such uh, local mass requirement, then you will show that inside this 
region, they were already content as well. So does it also say that if this condition is not met on some questions list, that this will either not be met in future slices or be met? It doesn't, right? Yeah. yeah. So in the next slide, when you say it uh, tells you something about development, yeah. uh, in what sense do you mean? Uh, sorry, which one? Or it does not tell you whether it's Ah, it does not tell you it's like, so it gives the existence because if you have such configuration of the mass, local mass, it tells you there already exists the trap circuit. It, but it does not tell you from which process that it evolves from the okay. trap the region. Right. Yeah, right. great. Thanks for the So um, the point we just talked about, discussed, um, is also um, recognized. And actually, the point of the evolution of the trap circuit is motivated the work by uh, Christopher and later people. Um, he commented that while well, the masses of the singularity theory and its existence, uh, its extension is due to Hawking and Penrose, are not capable of demonstrating that concept of closed trap surface is evolution. And by this, I mean that a closed trap, trap surface can, and in fact, form in the evolution, starting from initial data in which no such surfaces are present. And this I think it's very deep inside because it's not a priori that the trap surfaces can evolve, but they provide, um, we will see later, the powerful uh, tools and the uh, uh, framework to study. But very, in very general terms, um, initial value formulation, um, as we understand it, refers to a study in this context, um, Einstein field equations, a system of partial differential equations and appealing to the associated results, including the existence of the uniqueness and the, the methods of associating stabilities of space time, et cetera. And one typical example of the initial value formulation is the ABM three plus one formulation of GR. And there are two important steps. Steps. The first is the foliation of space time. We need to choose some uh, suitable three-dimensional non-intersecting type of surface on which you have the three metric defined and the strange curvature, so that um, they can they can constitute a, co a complete initial set that's given by the pupil, um, the surface with slice and the um, three metric and the strange curvature. Um, with that set up, I want to talk uh, mention the very good um, new methods invented by Christodor and those later people from the from the mathematical relativity, because from the singularity. The point we see is that the initial expansion of those neural geodesics on the trap surface um, um, uh, <clears throat> will be negative. And this naturally relates to the dynamics of the trap surfaces with the initial uh, value problem of the neural generators. And that's why they want to use uh, the neural hypersurfaces as a right hand side threshold to gener uh, generate by the outgoing and the incoming um, geodesics from the two sphere. Um, to space like uh, sorry to two surfaces uh, and use those um, neural surface to foliate the space time. So uh, each point of the two surface can be um, intersected and picked out by the um, neural surfaces, so that um, um, we can have the two sphere uh, sorry two surface and then the the metric you can use the metric on it and the second fundamental form of that two sphere a uh, two surface. And here's, I want to introduce a uh, quickly conceptual uh, um, tell about, uh, talk about the first result um, about the trap surface formation by Crystal in 1991. <clears throat> um, in this work, um, equipped with the double neural foliation method that they developed, Crystal gives us the sufficient initial conditions for the formation of trap surfaces in the spherical symmetric scalar model. So he imposed the scalar field in the model and with the spherical symmetry, but it gives us the sufficient condition from which the formation of trap surfaces can form from it, from untrapped surface uh, previous. And those conditions are expressed in this work in terms of the Hawking mass, which has the relation to the extrinsic curvature and the, the area radius of the two spheres foliated by the above mass. So it gives us uh, the double neural variation used in this work gives us a very good co uh, configuration of the initial data. And but more importantly, the, this uh, very symmetric model and um, the simplified model gives us a template for studying the uh, later work um, 
in 19, uh, in, in 2009, crystals were managed to lift the symmetry condition. But by lifting the symmetry condition, it introduced some subtleties. For example, he said um, the dynamic of degrees of freedom of the gravitational field cells then comes into play. But with the dual ends of uh, simplicity and to clarify the uh, focusing effect due purely to the gravitational field, he considered only the vacuum Einstein field equation with uh, uh, only <clears throat> gravitational waves. And in addition to the double null affiliation method we introduced, he also introduces a method called the short pulse method to have a uh, detailed uh, um, specifically specify the description of the uh, initial condition of those uh, gravitational waves. Um, and the intuitive picture and the proof skeleton is that he used the, the short house method to construct the initial gravitational data. And on the, especially on the incoming more hyper uh, surfaces, the data is just a trivial, just Minkowski. What really contributes are the data on the outgoing on neural hypersurfaces. And on the outgoing neural hypersurfaces, there are no trap surfaces, and the, but they have the very, um, uh, the, the neural shear, which generates the, the sound short power uh, of the lens. Um, and the relations we will show in the appendix if you are interested. And but, but that suggests that the, the short power is sufficiently small. The lens is probably sufficiently small compared to the radius of the trap surface um, to be formed. So, but the results after those construction is that it shows to us even in the vacuum space time with no trap surfaces at the outside at the outside in the beginning, trap surfaces with a sufficiently long time scale can form from the focusing of sufficiently strong incoming gravitational waves, and this is uh, very amazing because it tells us not only in what situation uh, trap surfaces can form but also by what kind of uh, uh, um, dynamics it can form. But also, um, some um, grants and of the, the scope and limits of the third paper. Um, after all, I think the, the, the construction and the proof of the theorems are very, very in high abstract uh, mathematical form. So we want to ask how useful is this approach when um, it is extended to um, concrete physical situations such as the initial data um, problem in the uh, cosmology. Um, maybe it's too demanding, but um, it, it provides a clean theoretical case, at least, where the dynamical formation of trap surfaces is known, but it does not rule out the uh, possibility of some um, initial data um, that prohibits the formation of trap surfaces. So really the problem in the uh, in this approach is um, what counts as distinction of a physical reasonable um, initial data and those are not. Um, cool. And then after those, after, after discussing those uh, insights and the limitations of uh, each pillar, um, we want to talk about by, by what sense we mean we need integration and uh, to combine the image from contents from each pillar to support the whole image of that code. So um, there is, from this survey, we, we want to show that um, a conceptual continuity exists and it can be used to relate to three different approaches. Um, for example, we can see that in the first pillar, we have features such as singularities and even horizons of the solutions, and they are discovered in the first uh, exact solution approach. But second, um, it's, break, it's breaking those um, features, for example, Singularity that motivates the second pillar um, through the causal topological analysis, and it draws our attention to the existence of existence of trap surfaces, as we uh, emphasize. Um, but the existence of trap surfaces also um, motivates some doubts, and uh, so further, uh, 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 we need some development to explain the dynamical formulation of the trap surfaces. And that further requires the techniques in the third pillar, the initial value formulation. And then we also see that results of the exact solution and cosmological approaches are motivated reasonable conjectures and um, to be proved and the theorems in the initial value formulation. 
And then we can also use the initial value formulation to study, again, the exact solutions. We can use a better um, um, characterization of the mass dis uh, distribution in different cases. And then we start, again, the, this uh, loop to- Do to... you take it that, that if there are trap surfaces, there are necess it necessarily means there's a black hole? Um, well, if, you, if your definition of black hole um, that depends, right? Depends on the definition of black hole. If that means um, the things that can be, like, especially neural lines can be trapped um, by those circuits, then if that means a black hole, then the answer is yes. Um, so I, it really depends on what your definition of black hole is. But normally we will say the short answer is yes. So uh, apart from the con conceptual continuity, um, there's a deeper sense about integration um, from the result of the results from different pillars. I would I would choose the the, the one conjecture by Kalaman to emphasize this point. So he pro proposed a final state conjectures in the classical black hole context. Um, the, the conjecture says that generic asymptotically flat initial data sets have maximum future dis uh, developments, namely the maximally extended solutions of the Einstein vacuum equations look sim asymptotically in any finite uh, region of space and as a pair of family solution. This, this is so-called the dream of these mathematical uh, uh, mathematicians. Um, but you can see that there are the, 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 the contents from the first pillar. We want to know the final state of black hole. What would that be look like? And we impose the, the results of the, the first pillar in the conjecture. Mm -hmm. And the conjecture itself is studied and used in the third pillar, the, um, the, the image value of operation. And the language about the, the structure of the space time is well studied in the second pillar, too. And this final conjecture actually contains many, many ingredients, especially the stability of the Kell family solutions and the rigidity. Uh, or the uniqueness of those solutions, and also the uh, the collapses conjecture or theorem of because you actually need a, a, a solution of black hole to form so that you can have this conjecture, and also it, it implies the cosmic censorship. If you have um, 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 if you have this final conjecture, it means um, there should not be similarities outside a black hole. Yeah, so. Just to summarize, what are the current understanding from this results in different pillars? Um, first, from the exact solutions, now we can see the, uh, the power of it is to provide some external views and solutions that can be used to inter uh, describe the interaction between black holes and the surrounding astrophysical objects. So we can have some astrophysical predictions, which further gain the empirical evidence. And if this pillar also provides our templates, simplified templates that are ready for future revisions from the perturbative expansion or the quantum correction. And they describe the, the uh, equivalent states of the, of the collapsing space time. And what we get from the, the, the second approach is um, um, beyond the restricted set of solutions to Einstein field equation uh, in, from the first pillar. Um, they, the second approach provides generic insights into how the black hole space and topologies will be. And it shed lights on the um, shift of focus uh, to the foundation concept, for example, the trap services. And then the, what the next pillar contributes is that it improves the mathematical rigor to filling the discrete ga uh, gaps remained uh, from the previous approaches. And it sharpens our understanding course of the nonlinear um, Einstein field equations, namely the space and dynamics, and it provides theories and conjectures by supplementing, this is the most important point, by, supreme, uh, by supplementing with the dynamical stories of the black hole formation. Um, yeah, so we kind of get a some integrated image of black hole, but here actually we are not suggesting that the reality of black hole, even classically, is settled. Because at least there's one sense in which those conjectures concerning um, um, classical black holes from the uh, initial value formulation is not, are not completely proved yet. But we want to suggest that the reality or the image of the reality of black holes should be in the fine 
uh, refining or tuning process. And well, from this survey, um, um, we want to suggest that the understanding of the reality does not actually require a unique definition, but rather the, 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 the flexibility of these different techniques and how, how they contribute to shift our attention to have a better understanding of those um, attention, new concepts. Um, the third point is, however, each pillar adds physically significant questions and related um, solutions to the question, the entity, and they accumulate. So we come to understand better what we have known about the reality of black holes by holding this list of questions and answers. Um, and I think that's what we mean by we understand what we mean by black hole rather than a single uh, uh, system the definition. And then um, the fourth point echoes will be uh, shown previously about the, the, the loop um, 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 conceptual community, so that uh, we want to argue that tracing reality is an iterative process. And if we now come back to the, um, um, oh yeah, by the way, um, if, we, if, if we talk about reality, uh, I forget to mention that actually Kleinman, um um described this fi uh, final conjecture and those different ingredients as the reality test of black holes. Yeah, sorry. Um, but if we come back now to the very general question, if we have in one theory and using different techniques, we have some novel um, um, predictions or say we, have, we want to understand some novel um, theoretic entity, how can we understand and distinct the mere mathematical possibility of it uh, from, oh, sorry, the physical possibility of it from the uh, possible, of nearly possible um, mathematical structure. And I think first um, criteria we see from the survey of black hole is that we want some, we want to prove the robustness and the stability of such uh, mathematical structure um, by various um, 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 ways and various uh, techniques um, that you can use to study it. Um, and this robustness can mean that when well, you have uh, contributions from the different somehow independent techniques so that they contribute to a cons consistent and robust picture of the mathematical structure. And also you can have uh, means to, to talk about under what kind of a physically uh, reasonable in, uh, data that such mathematical structure could exist. And then I think the second point from the survey is that um, um, we indeed need the integration of different methods in the sense that um, we have some traceability in uh, refining account of the entity, of the new theoretic uh, entity, rather than taking any one method to identify the essential feature of black holes, because we can see from the study that um, actually the shift of how to characterize black hole has shifted from the singularity to different, uh, different kinds of horizons and the boundaries, the trap surfaces, and then we understand better how those um, uh, surfaces can form and develop. And because that's partially because that's uh, related to our observational evidence. And the trap surfaces uh, notion actually motivates the further local um, horizons, uh, for example, the dynamical and isolated horizon and traveling horizons in other fields of physics. And also we need the interplay, uh, interplay among distinct methods and um, they propound uh, research questions that demand and inspire alternative tools and definitions. Yeah. And yeah, thank you. That's a uh, point on the chart. Um, I'll read a question from the chat because it was asked um, a bit earlier. So, uh, Parth asks, if you perturbed energy density profile rather than considering homogeneous, we can consider more physically realistic profiles in homogeneous energy density distributions. If you did that in the OSD, uh, OSD collapse, then how can one define stability of the end state? I mean, the dynamics of an apparent horizon will change and the final state could differ after introducing an inhomogeneous matter density profile? Well, um, it's a good question, though. Um, but, but if you perturb those uh, models, like um, 
we need to consider like um how much you perturb it. Like you can have small data that perturb that used to perturb it, or very large data that destroy the um, um the, the structure in short time. But I'm not sure, like um, maybe they can tell me more information about it. So like in long time evolution, what would those perturbations be? And so the question is many the question is in what time scale do we talk about the perturbation? Because that concerns whether we will have the final state or not. Um, Prev, if you would like to elaborate, we can uh, project you. <laughs> okay, they just said thank you. Yeah. And I, I also want to mention if you are uh, uh, Chris and Neil's uh, courses are online, I think if they, you do want to jump in, I feel free to. I cannot see you. Sorry. So, so this is waving. Yeah. <laughs> so, my question uh, so, I think what you're also talking about is this limited donor body model of collapse. Where you have uh, on the initial data, uh, you have a star which is still dust, uh, but it's not organ damage neither because the density is not going to be good. It's uh, some human identity. Let's say you can parameter the initial data as uh, the gaming density as a function of radius, as instead of rho of r equal to rho naught, which is a constant, mm -hmm. rho naught minus rho to r squared. So it's centrally more dense than it is, and it's polynomial parallel to. So your initial data is a two-dimensional parameter space, row naught and row two. Yeah. And you can partition this into black holes and make a singularity. Yeah. Um, so in this, the reason I mentioned this is because in this context, what would you associate with a time scale? Because what we're talking about is uh, the gradient of energy density or the central energy density. That's the space we're So in this sense, is there a is there a similar time scale argument that you can make? Um Right. Um, but yeah, also like you um, um with your clarification, I understand that well maybe we have some scenarios or nature similarity that might not depend on the time scale. Right, right. right. So I mean in that case, I I don't know the current like very non-controversial conclusion about whether non-similarity can really realistically form by those perturbations or not, right? Because I think there are some still debates about whether what, whether like this, this kind of uh, things of matters can really have some realistic nature significance. And that's, I think, not settled yet. So I have not. I don't know if that answers. But thank you. Um, if there are any questions on the Zoom, feel free to use the raise hand when they can call on me. Okay, yeah, I'm going. <laughs> so uh, I have another question. Um, I think your slide could you uh, maybe explain this one to the Yeah. So uh, in the second point, you say that there are conditions that are expressed in terms of Maki mass and radius. Yeah. So is the statement here that these conditions are expressed on the Cauchy slides? That uh, I'm not even, I, I don't even know if we define the Maki mass on a particular Cauchy slide. Yeah. Uh, but is there is a statement that if there is some you know compactness condition that there is enough walking mass inside some some sphere, yeah. then it will form a trap surface. Is that the kind of thing I should say from? Yes, I see. So um, in case you want to have a better understanding of it, here's the complete mm -hmm. theorem, and it tells you like so the the the, the whole mass is measured on the um on the two two surface that are foliated by the groups have surfaces. I have a question. Uh, so I was thinking more about like some of the more recent talks that we've seen in a part of this uh, seminar series. And a lot of them are kind of using uh, methods of numerical relativity to answer questions about whether or not things happen generically and things like that. So then I was reflecting on that in terms of the conceptual continuity that you're pointing out between the pillars. Um, and I was wondering if you could say more about how you're thinking about the conceptual continuity. So it seems like for sure, they're um, talking about the same kinds of things. Uh, but I'm also wondering if there's a kind of methodological continuity happening in certain cases where questions that arise in uh, your first, your second pillar with respect to like singularity theorems and such are being answered by other kinds of approaches. Um, so, in terms of methodology, <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so. 
first of all, I um I would say yes, there there are the uh, continuity in terms of methodology. For example, if we as you mentioned, the numerical activity, actually in the very like early developments of that, they also have uh, based on relies on a lot of work by the uh, uh, the first uh, value formulation people. And I so we have the front uh uh, trocade and for half studies of the anti-field creations in terms of each player formation, and that could be further used in the activity. And also, um, um, if we dive into the more detail of the second pillar to suggest, actually, we already use the rational equation and we use the focus equation as the initial data of that uh, equation. So, the methodological ones we have different, like very intricate, um, um intricate uh, 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 relations of these different pillars. So we can use the some parts of the source or methods in the, in the other pillars in the second, right? So we can also use, for example, as the last, uh, as I suggested, you can use the source from initial value formation now to form the exact solutions, right? Um, so there's definitely a sense of a community of the methodology. And um, um, what I, yeah, yeah, I think that that, that should suffice the answer the question. Um, that's a, that's a I, well, maybe I can ask also, like, what do you see as the relation between these? Like, do you think that this kind of conceptual continuity is a necessary condition for methodological? Because you think, like, if they're not talking about the same kinds of stuff, why would they share methodology with them? Um, yeah, good question. Um, Um, yeah, I'm thinking about whether it's necessary condition is so strong, but but surely if you have such, so there are different things that guarantee the, the conceptual continuity. First of all, uh, the, the very true sense is that they are related, they are uh, related by the underlying theory of general activity, but um, and the reason that this continuity contributes to the same entity or the phenomenon, I think has the reason from um, that those different techniques of studying mm -hmm. the, 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 the thing, um, they don't fall apart. They contribute to a robust picture of that. It, it, it address the same entity or same phenomenon from different angles, but those different angles connect to each other and they answer the mm -hmm. questions that cannot be answered uh, the other uh, angle. So I think in that sense, it gives you the robust um, uh, uh, image of that the things you want to talk about, and that's the maybe that's the rationale for the things. I guess from that point of view, it would be interesting to have an example of uh, a case where that failed. Yeah, where something did turn out to be a yeah. mathematical artifact. Uh, do you, do, you, do you, yeah? Uh, <laughs> I'm having trouble, uh, but I'll, I'll I'll try to think more. Uh, sure, I think that, 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 that'd that's be good. nice. Yeah. And then we will see why in that case. That field and what further difference we want to see from this. So, yeah, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if there's like an inter translation like, yeah. thing that you need. Right. Yeah. It's not impossible that you can construct a similar hypothetical entity that satisfy maybe um, those continuity, but they fail to be. And, and we also want to mention, of course, this like contribution of the robust picture is, is on the theoretical side. And if we have such a robust picture, we also need the input of uh, empirical evidence to, to give us the real data of it. And that's why in the beginning we mentioned this work, the reality means we use techniques from the theoretical side and granted the existence and the empirical evidence. But we want to understand if we have the mathematical st uh, structure by, uh, say, by one field. From the theoretical side, how can we adjust the uh, physicality, adjust them as a physical canon? Right. And then further then we can use them to uh, map the evidence. Yeah. I think that helps. It, it just uh, sort of uh, I, this, this isn't a perfect example, but uh, the Einstein mapped universe is it, it, it's beautiful from the point of view of an exact solution and simply uninteresting as soon as you think of account the differential equation. Yeah, we think about it. Um, Okay.
So I don't see any further questions on Zoom. So in that case, uh, let's all thank each other again. Great. Thank you all.